hello everyone in this video we are going to discuss the very basic concepts of fibroid in this thing we will see how a fibroid develops how it causes the symptoms why we should remove it or even not remove it and what are the problems related to this topic see uh, when you see uh, anything in the medical if you see the name you will get the idea of most of them it's like fibroid so anything that is oid in medical world that means it looks alike but not it is so fibroid if you see this is the fibroid this is the uterus and these are various kind of fibroids and if you see the real fibroids are here that is that are removed by myomectomy they look like a fibrous tissue that's why it's called fibroid but they are not the fibrous tissue then what what, what they are they are tumors they are benign tumor and how a tumor develops if one cell becomes uncontrollable and divides infinitively it makes a tumor okay so myometri uh, myoma is also like that a single cell of myometrium becomes uncontrollable keeps dividing and dividing and that's why it becomes a fibroid and that's why most of the fibroid having smooth outline why because the cells keeps developing on all the directions that why they are smooth and without any angle now what they do is when they uh, when they make uh, when they become bigger they compress the peripheral tissue adjacent to them this tissue so this compressed tissue makes their capsule it's not a true capsule it is a false capsule now uh, if we think that that the growth factor for uterus is estrogen and progesterone so estrogen and progesterone basically signal growth in the uterus this is well known fact and so with the fibroid due to hyper estrogenic stress estrogen is on higher side for a long time that's why some of the uterine muscle will become uncontrollable for growth estrogen is a growth inducer so some cell gets crazy and makes fibroid that's it so increased estrogenic state for long time is a risk factor for developing fibroids increased time of reproductive period for example a female has a time of 15 to 14 5 year so if early menarche and late menopause will be there then the total reproductive years in which the estrogen state is high will be increased so these females are at increased risk of fibroid the females of uh, obese female in which there is a obese cells fat cells which convert the testosterone or androgens into estrogen by estro uh, by aromatase enzyme this also leads to hyper estrogenic stress and this will again becomes a risk factor for a fibroid again i i have told you already it is a benign tumor but yes there is a very small risk of becoming malignant 0.5 percentage less than 0.5 percentage so this risk is considered very low so whenever you see fibroid it's okay it's not a malignant tumor it's not a cancer at all okay what is uh, if someone has a fibroid what does make sense to us most of the fibroid don't make sense because most of the fibroid are asymptomatic they does not cause any symptoms it only becomes important when they cause symptoms what are the symptoms most common symptom is irregular menses why fibroid do irregular menses because they are a space occupying lesion they 
do continue irritation of endometrium and that's why there is a irregular menses any object that irritate or touches continually the endometrium it will do ir uh, irregular menses same happens with the intrauterine contraceptive device that is IUCD IUCD do the same thing and that's why the side effect of IUCD is what irregular menses it can also cause infertility because continuous irritation of the endometrium makes it's a, not a proper thing for implantation and that's why due to implantation failure fibroid will cause infertility now which fibroid will cause infertility the fibroid who touches or immediately beneath the endometrium those fibroids will only go to infertility sometimes the fibroid becomes a more in size more than four centimeter which such a big fibroid it will cause pressure symptoms to the adjacent tissues of the uterus some fibroid some people when they, they have a bigger fibroid they have a fear of that the fibroid can be turned into a malignant transformation so so in this particular symptoms only we need to remove the fibroid and how will we will remove the fibroid what are the what are the techniques or methods to get rid of fibroid okay we will see discuss but first of all how we make a diagnosis diagnosis is done by usg only usg is a very good diagnostic method for fibroid when in the usg you see hypoechoic or heterogenic appearance lesion in the process this is the uterus and this is a fibroid okay now types of the fibroid is very easy to type the fibroids just like this fibrosis is completely into the myometrium that's why it is intramyometrial this is outside half half the hydros are outside so sub serosal because this is a serosa below the serosa that is sub serosal if the fibroid some fibroid is here then it will be called sub mucosal fibroid because it is just beneath the mucosal fibroid these are the external fibroid extra uterine fibroids that are outside the uterus so it is very easy to type the diagnosis now how the type of the fibroid it makes to think us that how we can remove it if we have a sub serosal fibroid or myometrial fibroid then we can go for a laparoscopy and then remove the fibroid if some fibroid is intramural fibroid so very intramural deep intramural fibroid and uh, it's also submucosal fibroid some part of that fibroid is under the mucosa then it is approachable from the hysteroscopic root so this will decide how we should remove that fibroid now we will we have talked about the myomectomy this is surgical approach it's a very good approach and definitive approach it can be either done by hyperoscopically or stereoscopically depending on the excess of the fibroid now some drugs would decrease the estrogen can also shrink the fibroid it cannot just uh, just uh, the fibroid cannot go away it can be shrinked but again as i have already told you there should be a long term estrogen effect to develop a fibroid so we need to give such a drugs that have a long term estrogen suppression that are gnrh agonist antagonist letrozole and all these kind of drugs will do what they will just uh, decrease the estrogen but again decreasing the estrogen inducing the menopause will again have a side effect for the woman symptomatically if you want to treat the irregular menses with a small fibroid you can treat with oc pills so this is how we understand the fibroid in the next videos i will particularly discuss about some very basic topic about deep topics about the fibroid thank you for that